Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. As Congress heads towards the August recess, we have the latest. Brandy Thompson has the rundown. We'll be talking with our junior state senator, Senator John Ensign from Washington, D.C., talking about energy, telecommunications, and the governor's race. And on the Power Pundit panel today, David Jacobs, Susan Fisher, and Alfredo Alonzo. It's all coming up next on an all-new Nevada News. Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. Here at the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, water resources come from fresh, clean groundwater, approved by state permit. The water is pumped from wells to million-gallon storage tanks and then distributed to TRI companies. Another amenity is our investment in a state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant. This disposal system converts waste to clean water for industrial applications. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevada. When making your decision as where to play golf, consider the resort at Red Hawk. You know you have made the right choice the moment you arrive. The friendly staff welcomes you to our award-winning pro shop. You know you've made the right decision on the first tee. The Lakes course is in the best condition in years. You know you've made the right choice after you've played 18 holes. The Resort at Red Hawk. The right choice. Nevada Newsmakers is sponsored in part by the Nevada Beer Wholesalers Association. As an employer, did you know you can be held liable for negligent hiring? A background screening by Employer Links can uncover criminal records like alcohol and drug convictions. It can verify the applicant's education, driving records, and professional licenses. Employer Links can check civil records, registered sex offender records, and social security fraud. Hiring the right person shouldn't be a gamble. Call Employer Links. Employer Links, protecting your investment. So, uh, who do you use for workers' comp? Pro Group Management. Ah, I've heard some good things about them. Oh, you bet. Employee background checks, safety training, claim seminars. Oh, and here's the great part. If you have an issue, they work for you, not against you. Sounds perfect. And expensive. Well, that's the best part. They saved me 30%. I've heard they saved others 50%. Works for me. Pro Group Management. Finally, workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And we welcome back to the program United States Senator John Ensign. It's a pleasure to have you here, sir. It's great to be with you. And um, we hopefully will not be cut off by a satellite uplink this time. <laughs> Let, let's get straight to it. Um, you've got a bill going through that's going to help the phone companies uh, uh, to be able to get uh, access to be able to deliver television programming uh, over the phone lines. How is this going? Well, actually, it's, it's not just about the phone companies uh, bringing video into the homes to compete against the cable companies. It really is about, it's a bill that's focused on the consumers to give them more choice. More choice not only for video, more choice for broadband, more, more choices for uh, how they uh, make telephone calls. Uh, we need to modernize our telecommunications laws to reflect the technological changes that have happened and, and give the consumers the same kind of choices that they have with their cell phones uh, where companies are competing for their business. We need to have that same kind of competition in other areas of, of our telecommunications fields. Uh, the world is changing dramatically and if we want jobs to stay in America, if we want American businesses to be able to compete against companies around the world, uh, we have to modernize our laws to reflect the technology changes that have happened today and and uh, and I put together a piece of legislation that we introduced today that I that I think that will do exactly that how much complaining are you getting from the cities in terms of uh, their abilities to control this well we did a couple of things for the cities uh, first of all we are going to preempt a lot of their authority simply because uh, today if uh, uh, there are 30,000 cable franchise authorities in the United States. Uh, you can imagine if you now want to bring in a new, for instance, if the phone companies want to come in uh, and uh, offer video to compete with the cable companies, they have to go through these 
30,000 franchise authorities. Uh, there's way too much bureaucracy involved. So we set some federal standards, uh, but give still some authority at the local level to be able to enforce the laws so that somebody doesn't have to call Washington uh, if their service isn't good. Uh, but uh, to uh, give this the, uh, the other big complaint that we heard from the cities is they were afraid of revenues and, and if they would you know lose some of their tax base and so we've maintained that they would be able to collect up to the five percent uh, for the uh, for the video services that cable pays right now they'd still be able to collect that from cable as well as the phone companies if they were coming in I just hope my rates go down with this <laughs> oh, there's no question. There's no question with competition. You always see a uh, a decrease in the rates. Look at how much it used to make, cost to make a a K or a cellular telephone call. Yeah. But because we were in an unregulated market where the consumers were the ones who chose the winners and losers, look what has happened. You get more minutes, less time, better services, and it's constantly evolving with innovation. Uh, we're not seeing nearly the advances as quickly as we uh, we are in the cellular. Uh, telephone areas that we are in say cable and and uh, in our local telephone service and I want to see that uh, those services move ahead more quickly so that people will have better prices uh, but also where our, our uh, we can have better services broadband is a place where the United States right now is 16th in the world the United States should never be 16th in the world when it comes to technology we need to be number one and our laws if we can update our laws we can be number one again well, that sounds great. Now, another bill that's going to have a consumer impact is the energy bill. It goes to conference today, and there's some elements in that bill that will impact Nevadans. What, uh, what, what exactly can Nevadans look forward to if that bill does pass? Well, uh, Senator Reid and I worked very hard on making sure that there was a provision in there that we got in, in, on the Senate floor, that that stayed uh, in the bill when, when the House and the Senate worked out their differences in conference. Uh, it, it, all it does is it gives the FERC, or the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, it gives them the, the authority that we think they already had uh, to be able to protect Nevada consumers against a company like Enron. Enron, uh, and, and we know the, the history of Enron, uh, 300 hundred and plus million dollars Nevada ratepayers would have to pay to Enron for energy they never received uh, according to the bankruptcy courts uh, recently uh, what we're doing is giving instead of the bankruptcy court uh, authority. We're giving some of that authority back to uh, who we believe should have it, the uh, the FERC or the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. And we think there, Nevada ratepayers will get a, a better hearing and have a better chance of not having to pay for this power that they never received. You were very unhappy with the eminent domain, uh, domain bill that came out of the Supreme Court. Um, and, I'm sorry, not the eminent domain, the ruling that came out of the Supreme Court. And you have a bill that's coming up uh, that will deal with that. Uh, can you give us a few details on it? Yeah, there's been a bill introduced by Senator Cor Cornyn that I've co-sponsored, uh, but I also introduced a separate piece of legislation, and we attack it from different ways. Senator Cor, Cor excuse me, Senator Cornyn from Texas has introduced legislation that would say that uh, if if cities. Uh, do use their eminent domain uh, is in the case like in the Supreme Court, uh, not for public uh, use, but for a public purpose. In other words, uh, you know, maybe make a little more tax money off of a people particular piece of property. If they use that, they can they cannot use federal funds to do that. We go one step further, and we say that if a private developer goes to a city and says, "Hey, I have a better use for that property. I can build something that will produce more tax revenues." If they do that, we don't allow any of the tax advantages to be taken advantage of at the federal level. And uh, and in many of these cases, they're using uh, certain provisions in the tax code uh, to be able to make the financing for the project work. So we think that we'll go a long way toward limiting uh, the, the takings of that our Constitution, I believe, was intended to uh, protect uh, individuals against a government taking their property. Uh, let's take a break, Senator. More with Senator John Ensign right after this time out on Nevada Newsmakers. For a videotaped copy of any Nevada Newsmakers program, call 775-857-2244. The tapes are $20 each, including shipping. My family started this business 27 years ago. We work hard to serve our customers and our community. But it's getting harder and harder to keep the doors open. For example, our workers' comp is going through the roof. Isn't anyone on my side anymore? The Retail Association of Nevada is. If you're a small business owner, we can cut your workers' comp by up to 50%, lobby for your interests, and keep you informed. Put us to work today. Material 
minerals we rely on every day come from the ground, and modern mining technology brings them to us cleaner and safer than ever before. To learn more about America's natural resources, visit nma.org, the National Mining Association. Reno's best dining values are all at one casino, the Pepper Mill. You can enjoy great savings on our popular specials. Pepper Mill's Coffee Shop offers daily lunch specials, low-carb dining, and all your favorite comfort foods. You'll find sensational lunch specials featuring Reno's freshest seafood, sushi, pasta, and more at Oceano. And early bird specials at Reno's Premier Steakhouse and Romanza Ristorante Italiano. The best values are at the Pepper Mill. Where are you dining? The best value in sight is here for you to see. From frames to lenses to eye exams, you're covered A to C. Davis Optical, your best value in sight. Davis Optical Centers, with two locations in Reno and Sparks. Davis Optical, your best value in sight. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. And we continue our conversation with United States Senator John Ensign. Uh, first of all, let me do uh, my usual disclaimer that Jim Rogers is the owner of KVBC and KRNV and also 123, which this program airs upon. He's also the Chancellor of the University System and a possible entrant into the governor's race. And he's made comments recently, Senator, uh, that uh, Jim Gibbons, for example, is not very bright and might look for simple solutions to complex problems such as the state's higher education budget. Uh, are you comfortable with the, uh, the attacks that are uh, being made on uh, Congressman Gibbons and his intelligence? Well, first of all, in the political world, I think that we should stay away from personal attacks. If somebody disagrees with policies, I think they should focus on that. And it's, uh, it just, I think it's inappropriate to have personal attacks. But uh, Jim Gibbons uh, has shown in the years that he's been uh, representing our state in Washington, D.C., that he's very capable, he's very bright, uh, and uh, he's put forward proposals that have made him very popular with the voters of the state of Nevada. That's why he gets uh, reelected uh, with overwhelming numbers. And, and uh, you know, Jim's a target out there because he's the front runner for the governor's race. And, and uh, uh, I'm sure he's going to have a lot of people taking shots at him over the next uh, 14, 15 months. That's the price you pay for being in the lead, huh? <laughs> uh, when you're a front runner, people uh, like to come after you, that's yeah. for sure. Well, another thing that uh, Gibbons is involved with is the Southern Nevada Lands Act, which is really your baby. And for those that don't know, it allows the BLM to sell Clark County land and use the proceeds to buy environmentally sensitive lands or do environmental restoration. But the federal agencies that are tasked with spending the money haven't been doing it very quickly, and thus there's this rather large lump sum that uh, the President and even Congress is looking at. And one of the things Congressman Gibbons Gibbons talked about was doing 35% of those proceeds to go to education. Now, I know you've been opposed to that um, particular aspect, but the sale of these lands is really contributing to the growth of Las Vegas and thus to the need of the schools. Why not put more money from that land money into paying for the schools that really are kind of tied to the growth? Well, the, the problem with uh, adjusting uh, for more local projects like that that really don't have a lot of federal uh, involvement is that uh, the more we try to just use it for purely local uh, reasons, the more it becomes a target for P senators and other states to steal that money. Uh, it's going to be a constant battle to keep that money in Nevada. We've been very successful uh, keeping that money there. It was a piece of legislation that uh, I wrote with Senator Bryan uh, back in 1998. Very proud of the legislation. It's it's uh, been a great piece of legislation for uh, for the quality of life, uh, both northern and southern Nevada and so uh, we want to keep it going like it is uh, and the more that we try to mess with it uh, you know changing the the formula changing exactly how it works the more there is a threat that we'll lose the money and so uh, you know I, I think that Congressman Gibbons, uh, while he, his intentions may, may be good, uh, I, I don't think that it's the, it's the right thing for us to do at this point. Um, Senator, let's uh, change gears here. I've been cheering off for your Chief of Staff, Scott Bensing's ear about this issue for uh, the last couple of weeks. I'm very concerned about the lack of a federal shield law for journalists in this country. Right now, Judith Miller has just spent over two weeks in jail for a story that she didn't write. Uh, Forty-nine states, the only state that doesn't have a, some form of uh, shield law is Wyoming. Um, isn't it time that we had a federal shield law to protect journalists and so they can do their job? 
I, I'm not going to try to avoid the question, but Sam, I will tell you that I am studying because there's, there are several different proposals that have been brought up here uh, in Washington, D.C., and there are different groups that are supporting uh, different uh, pieces of the legislation. And, and, you know, I'm not a lawyer to understand exactly how, uh, you know, is there still are the national security concerns being met uh, while we're protecting the journalists? Uh, are do some of them agree with the Constitution or go against the Constitution? Uh, it's very complex, and so uh, you know I can understand the principle and understand the need for the principle, but we have to do it in a way that uh, that still protects national security and do it in a way that's consistent with the Constitution. I, I know that uh, the New York Times is probably not your favorite newspaper, but they certainly laid out that national security uh, obligations. Should be attended to, and also the case of uh, uh, shielding murderers, etc. Uh, but, but hopefully, uh, would you, would you say at least that you're leaning towards a federal shield law? Well, I'm leaning toward the principle. I think the principle is the right thing as long as we can address some of the concerns. And that's, that's why I said studying the issue and not just uh, knee-jerk reacting on legislation just because there was a high-profile case of some journalists uh, that may be being treated uh, in, in a way that, that the media you know, doesn't feel as fair. Uh, I, I think that it's important that we, we study it and we do it right uh, so that we don't uh, end up with a law that gets rejected one for one thing by the courts and uh, and two that that uh, as i mentioned before that we do protect national uh, security concerns but you you would i'm sure have concern that a reporter would be in jail for a story that they didn't write uh, in, in effect you know isn't that a freedom of speech i mean i'm having a conversation with somebody and now i'm in jail well, it depends. I, I, I mean, just try to try to imagine a case like this, Sam, where uh, you know somebody has classified information, and now they talk to a journalist, and they and that classified information ends up leading, uh, you know, to to the death of American soldiers in in the field. Uh, nobody uh, should that, Senate, should Senator, that? No, no, right. absolutely not. That that I totally agree with you. Right. That national that's, security concerns right. have to be addressed. Right. And that's all I was saying, Sam, is is that we have to make sure when we're addressing. Uh, this piece of legislation that we do it in a way uh, that uh, addresses the concerns that I just brought up and uh, but but I it's certainly a piece of legislation that I that I lean in favor of uh, if we can draft it in the right way okay senator we have like 300 more questions and we're out of time <laughs> so I know we're coming up on the uh, the break here for August and we trust that you'll come back and visit us and spend a little bit more time with us uh, looking forward to it. I'm going to be spending a lot of time in August in northern Nevada, so I look forward to visiting with you. Thank you very much, United States Thank Senator you. John Ensign. Always a pleasure. We'll be right back on Nevada Newsmakers with the Pundits after this. This is Nevada Newsmakers. For more than a decade, the Southern Nevada Water Authority has been helping the community embrace conservation as a way of life. That includes replacing more than 50 million square feet of grass with water-smart landscaping. During the worst drought on record, watering restrictions and tough landscaping codes have reduced the community's water use by billions of gallons, even as thousands of new residents were moving into Nevada. That's smart water management, and that's our promise to Nevada. When making your decision as where to play golf, consider the resort at Red Hawk. You know you have made the right choice the moment you arrive. The friendly staff welcomes you to our award-winning pro shop. You know you've made the right decision on the first tee. The Lakes course is in the best condition in years. You know you've made the right choice after you've played 18 holes. The resort at Red Hawk. The right choice. So, uh, who do you use for workers' comp? Pro Group Management. Ah, I've heard some good things about them. Oh, you bet. Employee background checks, safety training, claim seminars. Oh, and here's the great part. If you have an issue, they work for you, not against you. Sounds perfect. And expensive. Well, that's the best part. They saved me 30%. I've heard they saved others 50%. Works for me. Pro Group Management. Finally, workers' comp that works for you. 
As an employer, did you know you can be held liable for negligent hiring? A background screening by Employer Links can uncover criminal records like alcohol and drug convictions. It can verify the applicant's education, driving records, and professional licenses. Employer Links can check civil records, registered sex offender records, and social security fraud. Hiring the right person shouldn't be a gamble. Call Employer Links. Employer Links, protecting your investment. And now, back to Nevada Newsmakers with Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, great power pundit panel today. As always, David Jacobs is here. He's the assistant city editor for the Reno Gazette Journal. Susan Fisher, welcome back. Thank you. And uh, she's with Fisher Consulting and Alfredo Alonzo, Lionel Sawyer, and Collins. Thanks for actually being here on a show when I've introduced you at the beginning of the show. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Let's start out. <laughs> yeah. We should explain that last week I introduced him and then the pundit panel arrived and Alfredo didn't, but, but we're happy to have him back. All right, let's, let's get serious here. Uh, yes, well, let's not start a trend. Come on. <laughs> Let's start out, David. Uh, uh, Jim Gibson, the Henderson mayor, uh, with a mighty war chest, uh, decided he's going to jump into the governor's race. Not sure yet if he's going to run as a Democrat or an independent. What are your thoughts on that? I don't know him personally, but it just seems like it's really, the race is really stirring up a lot of interest from a lot of people. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next few months with you know, who positions for what and maybe some of the down ticket races maybe someone will decide to go for one of those I think those would be interesting to watch too. You, you know Susan, the, the, is there a danger here with this many candidates uh, in the primaries that we just kind of split the vote so much that uh, some of the better candidates may not get the votes they need? Well there's a danger of that, there's a danger for uh, lobbyists and others too because we get hit up a lot for campaign contributions it's going to be splitting the money that's a danger for the candidates but I'll tell you Jim Gibson is a very formidable candidate. Um, he is he's a very charismatic person. He walks into a room and people take note. He's not a, a big man like John Wayne or anything, but he's just one of these people who, who draws attention. And I think that he will get a lot of attention statewide as he moves around. You know, Alfredo, I think we have a lot of charismatic people that, you know, talking about being in this race. I mean, you know, Jim Rogers, the owner of Sunbelt, and uh, Bob the, Beers, uh, the university yeah. chancellor. I mean, yeah. these are not shy people. Mm -mm. No, this, this is going to be one of those races that I think is going to be viewed nationally uh, as, as the one to watch. I mean, it is going to be a very exciting race. I mean, I'm, you know, as a junkie, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, uh, the the issue I think that people uh, need to remember too is how important Northern Nevada is going to be in this race. Well, and that's where Jim yeah. Gibson, for example, is completely unknown. I mean, we right. had him on the show, um, uh, boy, about six months ago, and he certainly didn't sound like he was going to run for uh, uh, governor. At that point, he was running for re-election as uh, mayor of Henderson. Uh, but but won't he have an incredible amount of work to do? He, he will. I think uh, I think all the candidates will. I think obviously uh, uh, Speaker Perkins and uh, and uh, uh, Senator. Or Titus have a little bit of a leg up because they've been around for a long time and they, they've spent some time up in northern Nevada. Uh, he will have to spend that money. He'll need a lot of money to get, to get some name recognition. Luckily, it's a small state. And in a small state uh, with, uh, with essentially two markets, uh, you can sell yourself and, and, and raise that name ID fairly quickly. Well, he's got name ID going into this. I mean, can you imagine a final of Jim Gibbons and Jim Gibson? Mm -hmm. I mean, the only difference is a B. I mean, that is going to be really a challenge for the voters to go, okay, which one do I like? Mm -hmm. well, 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 this raises another question, which is that, you know, a couple of months ago when we were talking about the governor's race, we were talking about the, it was possibly going to be anywhere from 8 to $10 million uh, would be needed to run this governor's race. C can we raise that kind of money in the state for all these candidates? I don't know that all of them are going to raise that amount of money. <laughs> but I think, you know, I, I think there's going to be so much interest that people are going to be given, and they're all going to have their various interests that they're going to want to support whether it's you know this part of the state or Las Vegas area. So I think there's going to be a lot of interest along various lines that will drive a lot of this. And, and a lot of, and, and you know, what we love on this program is no clear-cut victories. We want people, you know, <laughs> acrimony. It will be interesting to, to see, too, how many people just stay out of a primary and yes. just kind of take a buy where I'm not going to give money until I see who's out of the primary. I'm well, this is a win-win for Jim Rogers because, <clears throat> you know, whether he jumps in or not, I think his station's going to make a little bit of money off advertising. <laughs> I, I, I believe all broadcasters in this state will make money. I think the show will make a little money off We're it. certainly oh. hoping so. Yeah, right. Something that's never happened before. Um, John Porter uh, looked like he wasn't going to have a challenger in today's Review Journal. The name Stan Hunterton uh, uh, pops up, a lawyer, former strike force attorney. Um, will he have a chance? Uh, you know, Tom Gallagher, a very well-funded candidate last time around, uh, didn't do that well. No. 
I, I think I think John uh, will have a good war chest going into this. Uh, he's got good name ID. It's going to be very difficult, and it's it, it leans R. I mean, it's a it's a fairly mm -hmm. Republican district that's getting more Republican every day. So I think any anybody that jumps in that race is going to be uh, it's going to be a tough tough road to hoe. Susan, I agree. I agree. And John hasn't done a lot wrong for anybody to to use. Um, his record against him. Well, and his, his hearings right now on Yucca Mountain, David, are probably going to help him too, giving him a little bit higher visibility mm -hmm. across the state, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and I, I just wonder, does anybody think that um, Andre, Andre Agassi is going to change his mind? And get back in? Yeah, well, that, that, that story actually generated yeah. a lot of a lot of interest. A lot of, yeah, a lot of interest. Doesn't sound like he's ready to get back in there, though. No, I don't get think back so, in but it's not I, don't think, I don't think that's Andre's deal. I mean, I, I again, I, uh, I, I think he, he would be. His name ID is amazing, but I, I just don't see it. Okay, let's let's. We've got about twenty seconds apiece here. Uh, the chancellor proposed a six hundred thousand dollars salary for the new Clark County uh, school superintendent. Um, the Las Vegas Review Journal, Journal of course, in its editorial went crazy today on that. Um, I think it's outrageous. David, your shot first. I just know that educators, superintendents, what, um, state superintendents, local superintendents, you know, their salaries are always going up, and it's a high-pressure job. I can't speak to that amount of money, but I do know that if you look at any of the trends and the tenure of some of these people, it's very short. So it's a high, high pressure. Six hundred thousand dollars! Oh my God, that is so out of line. Like outrageous, <laughs> outrageous, <laughs> outrageous, <laughs> outrageous. They Alfredo, need a, a quality you CEO. Quit, you right. could quit your job and get a pay raise <laughs> by running for Clark County. I'd like to see our teachers get raises first. Yes, yes, ten yes. four. Yeah, that's, that's where we got to leave it. Bob Beers did it right. Let's cap it instead. We'll be right yeah. back on Nevada Newsmakers after this. you in part by the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the world's largest industrial park, the resort at Red Hawk, and the Peppermill family of casinos. Here at the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, water resources come from fresh, clean groundwater, approved by state permits. The water is pumped from wells to million-gallon storage tanks and then distributed to TRI companies. Another amenity? is our investment in a state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant. This disposal system converts waste to clean water for industrial applications. Welcome to the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, the largest industrial park in the world, building economic prosperity for Nevada. Okay, Susan Fisher, you have a message for the public out there. We have been working very hard to raise $11,800 for the 113th AVN. This is the, the local... Uh, Nevada Army Guard unit that's stationed in Kandahar, Afghanistan. This is to provide satellite internet access so that we have some redundancy and expanded bandwidth so they can contact their families and stay in touch with their families here. Um, we are $5,000 short and we need that $5,000 desperately to be able to provide this this satellite hookup. Okay, what you do is you go to NevadaNewsmakers.com, click on the links button, the information of how to contact Susan is there. She needs $5,000. Let's get it done today. Uh, next week on Nevada Newsmakers, guests include Tom Mitchell, editor of the Las Vegas Review Journal, and he a very outspoken man, and Chris Dune Kiliani. Uh, no, no shrinking violence. No shrinking Watch violence. Nevada Newsmakers <laughs> next week for some great shows. We'll see you then.